The following video has been modified to comply with guidelines. The full version with the deleted scenes and bonus materials can be found using the links in the description below this video. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I got my hands on the latest Superbox model called the Superbox S4 Pro. So it's a live streaming model designed to deliver thousands of live TV and video on demand streams for your entertainment. So to see what's new in this model, stay tuned, my full review is up next. Welcome back. So here is the S4 Pro model. It comes with a Bluetooth voice remote, one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter, and a user guide. So this model is made of plastic with the Superbox branding to the top. For IO ports, it has one HDMI, one Ethernet LAN, one optical audio, one IR extender, one AV port, its DC power input, and a pair of external antennas. To the side has one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0, a reset button, and a micro SD card slot. It has an LED display to the front and four anti-skid rubber feet with ventilation holes to its base. So for startup, you have the usual Superbox animation followed by their disclaimer, then you're taken to the launcher. The included Bluetooth remote is called the RC100, and upon first startup, it starts in infrared mode. You have to press the OK button and the back button to put it into pairing mode to connect it via Bluetooth. This launcher is your standard Superbox launcher, and according to the disclaimer, I can confirm that this box does not come pre-installed with any live streaming or video on-demand applications, not even an app store other than the Google Play Store. So basically what you have here is your standard Android TV box. In order to access live streaming and video on-demand service, you have to install an alternative app store, then the streaming applications from that store. So that's basically the selling point of this box and the price of the unit is more for the service than for the hardware itself. So moving along to the rest of its features. So when it comes to doing other activities on the box, it runs on the mobile version of Android 9 by operating system and it's rooted as shown here by the root checker app. This gives you the flexibility to install any application you want from the Play Store or sideload it via APK. It has Google Wide Vine Level 3 with no HDCP protection, which means its HDMI output signal is not encrypted to protect streaming services such as Netflix and others from piracy. This will restrict these services to basic 480p resolution only, even if you have an HD account. So before I continue, I will just take a moment to run through its hardware and firmware features for enthusiasts that take these into account. You get 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz and this is true 60Hz as detected by my capture card. It has HDR display with auto HDR feature. It has audio output options and audio pass through option. And you have 67 various languages to choose from. And that's all there is. There are no HDMI CC options, root switch, power key definition options, built-in screen rotation, hardware monitor feature, or Samba server feature. For hardware specs, it shows that it's an all-winner chipset running on 2GB of DDR3 RAM, 32GB of internal storage, and its Bluetooth version is 5.0. Its CPU is the all-winner H6, configured in 32-bit mode, clocked at 1.48 GHz with support for only 32-bit apps and games. Its GPU is the Mali T720 dual-core GPU with OpenGL 3.1 support. It has dual-band AC Wi-Fi adapter. It does not have Vulkan support. Its idle CPU temperature is 63 degrees Celsius and it has decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos, but there are no surround sound audio decoders. So that's its system and hardware information, 
And from these specs, it shows that there isn't much you can do on its hardware besides stream movies and TV shows. For watching YouTube videos, you can select as high as 4K 2160p quality. However, the video freezes and it plays best at 1080p resolution, but there is no HDR. Playing 4K videos can only be done using its internal media player and though it plays OK, it does not trigger the Auto HDR feature. I installed the menu button alternative navigation bar and it works perfectly because this box has root access so the recent apps feature works perfectly. So due to its low specs, I will not do a gaming segment, nor will I do a surround sound audio segment. Instead, I will now do a slideshow of its performance benchmarks. So with these benchmarks, it ranks at position 90 on my rankings chart with a 2 star rating based on its hardware performance. To view this chart, see the link in the description below. In summary, the new Superbox S4 Pro, even though the live TV and the video on demand service works great, allowing you to cut the cord and put some money back into your pocket, they could have done a better job by using a more modern chipset. So just in time for the Amazon Prime Day sales event, Superbox is offering the $50 off the Amazon price and $30 off the website price with the coupons I placed in the description below. However, the Amazon coupon can only be used 20 times and the website coupon is unlimited. See the links in the description to take advantage. So give this video the thumbs up to show your support and as usual, links in the description below are my affiliate links and when used to purchase, I receive a small stipend for my reviews. So thanks in advance for using my links. Remember, this video has been edited from its original format and to see the full version with bonus content, go to my Rumble and Odyssey channels. Links can be found in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button and ringing that notifications bell to be notified each time I release a new video or decide to do a giveaway. Stay tuned and see you in the next one.